Well, uh, everybody, hi, my name is Brett Cooper. I'm the head football coach at uh, Perry Meridian High School here in the south side of Indianapolis. Um, we compete in classification 6A, which um, I think Coach Banstry, you're, you're in uh, you're in Ohio, so that would be comparative to a Division One uh, school. There, we compete in the Mid State Athletic Conference, um, and what we're going to talk about today is how we utilize our tight ends to to create the look we want and really manipulate a defense to um, really get them into the structure that they are either uncomfortable with or that we know uh, what we're going to see on a consistent basis on, on a Friday night. So um, a little bit of my background, I kind of bounced around a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go through all that, but uh, we started tinkering with this stuff when I was at LaSalle in 2014. Um, we were superbly talented and it didn't really matter what we did. We were going to be probably successful. So it kind of started the wheels turning there. Um, and when we went up to Maslin, um, we started year two, we really started moving kids around and moving tackles over and it, the addition of tight ends and really the H back looks. Um, and we kind of fell into um, really what we're going to heavily talk about today, which is kind of our ACE and deuce packages. Uh, my second year at Indian Creek due to the fact that we had um, a quarterback change and we were not able to throw it as efficiently as we wanted to. Um, early on, we did later in the year, but um, we took a kid who we were using him in spread stuff with H personnel, H backs, and kind of your, your, your 10 or 11 personnel stuff. And we were still getting eight in the box because people weren't respecting it. So we said, if you're bringing eight, we're going to bring eight to nine guys into the box and, and play football and still be able to run. Because, um, you know, our philosophy is, as a program, is to – a, we've got to be able to stop the run defensively, and then offensively, we've got to find a way to run. Um, and so it, it's kind of just melded uh, and, and grown in the past two years of, of what we've done here. So our philosophy and kind of behind the scenes of this is, you know, we want defenses to defend eight gaps, eight gaps. And, and they can't bluff it. They can't fake it. They've got to show up and, and, and show people present in those gaps for us to be uh, for them to be very uh, fundamentally sound. On top of that, we are able to to have the, the vertical threat of four verts. Obviously, when you run in tight ends, you're not running wide outs down the field, but there are also guys coming from different directions to uh, to defend that four verts. So, uh, and, and we'll kind of go through that and break that all down as we get through this presentation here. Uh, but every snap, we're going to try to manipulate the defense into, one, showing us where you want to align, and two, you've got to defend four verticals. So what this also does is it gives us the opportunity to create really simple, minor adjustments, minor movements uh, to create explosive plays. And we'll show that here as we go through. Um, you know, there's something that we've really talked about over the past two years, and we've really honed on it over this, um, the, the, this corona break, is we want to be really, really simple. We want to be uh, an offensive menu that is very, very, uh, tight, but it can be this way. So we have very few concepts um, in our run game and in our pass game, but we do have the availability to build off of those. Um, and so we, we try to build a look and an action off of each look and, you know, four or five different things that, that are going to look the same to a defense. Um, and I think the bottom part of this is extremely important to understand if this, if you're utilizing tight ends, um, it, it, and we'll talk about the negatives in a second, but our basics, our, our base offense must work against everything. Sorry, that's a typo. Our base must work against everything that we show so that if we do show up on a Friday night and they're in different spots, we got to be able to be good to go and be able to still block. You know, um, one of the first things we'll show you is, is a team that we prepped all week is a 4 2 5, you know, really a 4 3 cover 4 team. And they came out and played. A 52 so we we have to have that understanding that that's going to happen to us from time to time um but our base runs must work against everything we must have our base passes be able to be good and adaptable that our kids can understand that no matter what shows up our basic rules are going to be fine in our base run play and base pass game um so, like I said, we kind of stumbled into this, and we're going to manipulate defenses. And by manipulate to us, that means that we are 
we're going to get them to align the way that we want them to. They're not going to dictate. They're not going to be able to bluff. If they bluff, they've got to be able to show their hand. We're balanced. Um, and we have a seven man front. So, um, they can only do like if we're facing a four, three team or a four, two, five team, there's only so many things that they can do within their structure to really defend and be, be fundamentally sound against our offense. Um, you know, a three, four, like people like to get into that. Now, you know, it's, you look at, um, the Baltimore Ravens and Kyle Shanahan out there with the Niners who use a ton of tight ends. Um, and then they both have been extremely successful recently because a lot of these defenses are playing against teams that throw it around. And, you know, that trickles down to our level where people play a three, four, and they try to be fancy and cute. And when you line up and you've got seven guys in the line of scrimmage, you, you've got to line up and play. And, and to us, that's an advantage because we know what you're going to do. Um, you know, if you do so, something different, we are easily uh, in a game. We, we can ID pretty quickly. We've got, pretty simple structure of what we're looking for on a Friday night. Um, and, and we found that teams typically play us very cautiously, um, that they're either going to be in a simple look and try to play fast and, 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 and defend us, um, or they're going to do something outside of their thing and they're going to break the rules. And, and that's what we love to see. And we always tell our kids that may stop us, but eventually we're going to find them out of position and they're going to break rules. So, we look for kids when we're looking at, at who we're playing, we're looking for, are they going to move this kid out of position? Is the personnel, um, is the personnel normal? So for a great example, a four, three cover four team, are they going to take the Sam and are they going to move him into the box? A kid that normally plays in space, are they going to put him inside? Is that his norm? If it's not, and he's really good, he probably can handle it. But most kids that play in space, play in space for a reason. Um, and so we're going to try to go and attack that kid. Um, in a three, four, those kids that are bouncing around on the edge, the outside linebackers, hang players, are, are they going to have to play up on the line of scrimmage? And if so, are they gap sound when they do that? And who is that, you know, seven, eighth, ninth defender that they're bringing into play? And, and do they clearly understand what they're supposed to be doing? Uh, and that's the last part. Here's the funny part. We, we talked about this the other day uh, in a staff meeting. Playing like this and talking like we are is it, kind of taboo. Um, you know, it, it is not the cool, it's not the, um, you know, we're, we're going to West coast rhythm passing air raid offense. Um, we joke around and call ourselves a double type raid sometimes. Um, but we're lining up to get us a, a look to run the football. And if you can stop us in the run, um, then we have answers to that. And if you can continuously stop us, obviously we're going to have to throw the football. Um, and so I'm going to take it, take a second. Hopefully this works well. Um, we've had some interesting time with, um, with huddle, but here's a team and I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. Um, here, here's a team that's normally a four, three cover four team and they line up and they play, um, a, a 50 look and I'm not, you know, it, I don't care what the end of the result plays. It's a gain of two. Um, but if we look at this here, we've got a D gap, a C gap. An A gap, he's not, we know he's not an, a double A gap player. Um, so he's either A here or B here, depending on the movement. He's A and B, and this kid's a B, C player, D player, and they've got safeties or a corner rotated down in there. They're probably short a gap, and we end up creasing them later on this game, and they are. Look, now this kid here, this inside linebacker, is now really a B, C gap player. He's a, he's a two gap player from the linebacker position at basically our point of attack. Um, and if we run it here, you know, we, we don't stay engaged in this block, but because we outnumber you in the box and, and you're doing something that's different than what's normal to you, your kids are hesitant and we're not, and we've got an opportunity, which this should be a home run play, but it ends up getting, you know, a, a two yard game. Um, same look, this is our ACE look. Um, this is our balance. The, the, the previous event I think was deuce, um, again, we're fine. We now know that these quarter safeties are in the box. This is what we're going to talk about, identify. But these safeties are now playing at seven yards, six yards. Uh, we have to be able to manipulate them in the play action game. Um, they're really committing nine guys if they're going to play that tight. So that's important for our box guy and me to know um, as the offensive play caller. 
like I said, we're still going to try to run it. And we got a couple yards into it. Um, and this is all in a, in a sequence of a first drive. Um, and so, again, they've got kids playing a, a two-gap linebacker that he doesn't really know. And we're not good at tight end because all week we had told the kid, hey, you're, we're going to leave that kid alone and we're going to end up kicking him out. They, they did something different. So we all know how that works. And then we can manipulate and go into empty. Um, and, and real quickly, all of this turns into a Q run. The same three play, two plays we just ran prior are now run just with a quarterback. We just give a different look and a different action. And we know that they're probably playing man out of this look. Um, and if you go back to the start of it, you can tell there's confusion. We're running a long trap play here with a Q run, and they are not aligned. Again, we're not really good at it either at this look, but this is the first drive of the game. We tell kids if they come out and do something different than um, what they normally do or what we practice all week, they may stop us a drive or two. We're going to get it fixed as coaches. And we should be excited because they are nervous and they're doing something that they're not used to. We will find that mistake at some point. And then, you know, here's just a look. We know they're playing man. We're inside the red zone. Um, tight ends, for some odd reason, get lost in translation. Bam, really, they're both open, both wide open on a mesh concept. And, you know, we don't make the play, obviously, but it's what it is. But we get the look we want. We're now, you know, zero. I mean, it's, it, it's a great look for us. To run or pass um, and then here's just a little tweak that we get just this is the explosive play part of it same game this team chases man sometimes they rotate they're chasing 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 they get all caught up on, on a we never even toss the ball out there and we get naked if you look from the back end we get three guys that are, that are wide open um, minus you know minus the tailback who is probably our, our, our least catchable guy, so um, our targeted guy. Um, and we get an easy catch and run for a touchdown there. So um, that's kind of a look at it. And then this is the one we talked about. We just hammered it here. This is a really good look at um, not having enough guys in the box and understanding what they're doing. So pre-snap, if we look at it, you know, they've got a kid probably B-gap. He's A-gap. He's D gap, so that means that this safety is a C gap player unless he moves. Um, he actually ends up slanting this way into this look, so um, he's a C gap, D gap player. So really, this guy ends up being this twelve ends up being a uh, a B a B uh, filler, and he doesn't know he's supposed to do that. Um, so we've created confusion on a simple inside zone run play, and. Our job as coaches, and we tell our running backs and our offensive line, our job is to get the ball to the third level. It's your job to make something happen from there. Um, and, you know, obviously we do. So um, if we get back into the presentation here, we'll kind of go through what we are looking at and, and kind of what we try to identify as a coaching staff uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. And this is to defend eight gaps. How are they going to get there? Um, are they going to commit to the run? So are they commit in seven, eight, or nine? Um, and if so, who are those seven, eight, ninth players? Um, we don't really care about the, the the interior guys a whole lot. Obviously, it matters. We break it down. Um, but our base rules are pretty set to determine, you know, we're going to be scheme-wise okay, no matter if they're a one, three, or a three, one. Um, if they're a slant front team, we really look at, are they edge or are they soft edge? Hard edge, are they capping us or are they not? Um, and then, you know, are those seven, eighth, ninth players worried about the pass? For instance, we talked about safeties a couple of times. Four, four teams, are these kids folding in on the run? And if they are, we've opened up the perimeter to, you know, a quick game look or we've opened up, if it's man, and we've opened up, you know, over the top shots one-on-one, -on -one, which – um, if we get one-on-one -on -one with a receiver all day, we'll take it. Um, so we, we try to figure out who that is, who they are, and where they go. And, and like I said at the beginning, the structure of this, the structure of a defense only allows you to do a couple things um, that are within what you normally do. And luckily for us on our schedule, we usually see a lot of the same stuff. We see a lot of 10-11, H-back sniffer. Um, cool, love the offense. I've run it, done it. Um, 
but this is different. It's, it, it's kind of like a wing T team um, in some essences. Obviously, it's not, but um, people don't practice against tight ends very often. Um, you know, 30, are we looking for movement? Don't, other than that, the front, we're not worried about it. Soft edge or hard edge, it's what it is. That's what we look at. Linebacker is a linebacker, like we said at the beginning. Is he is he coming into the box to to be a, a player? Usually in our schemes, our tight end is going to end up blocking that Sam. So um, if he's extended and it's soft edge, we're going to go out and get him. If it's a hard edge with a DN, he's usually going to go up and get him anyhow. Um, so it doesn't really affect. But if he's not used to playing in the box, we're going to go attack him uh, in the run game. And then obviously, depending on what they do on the back end, I mean, you know, cover four quarters, look, you've got a pretty good look at, at getting one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter with your wide out. Um, we always ask, is this a natural position? Is that Sam that used to play in space? Is that natural? Does he do that naturally? Um, a three, four team, do those guys naturally play well on the line of scrimmage? And if the answer is no, we're going to go right after. And in our run game, we usually have two options. Uh, we can block the first guy outside the tackle, or we can make an adjustment and block everything down, blocking the, the tight end. So, um, and then the secondary, how are they committing these third level guys? A lot of times you get a four, four team, the, the ninth player is going to be that free safety. Um, if you get a three, four, we're really looking at how hard those safeties are playing if they're capping the edges on those outside linebackers. So here's what we look at and here's what we think about. If we get seven in the box and where they're going to commit seven to the run, four, three cover, you know, uh, with a swim box where they kick that kid in, um, we, or, or a three, four where they're going to cap it and play too high behind it, we got to run the ball. Um, we, the availability of our offense is we can run it from under center. We can run it from, from the gun. Um, we can run it as a Q read. We can run it as, um, a Q run, uh, and then obviously build play actions off of that. So we will just block everything very solid. If you commit seven and uh, we could read it to get a plus one, it's just a quick tag as you'll see in the commit eight. Um, but in that, if they're going to commit seven to the run, they're going to play the pass pretty normally. And so we look to manipulate safeties to, to really, because they're probably going to be running heavy down um, if, if we're successfully running the ball. And so we're going to look for a good play action. If not, um, and we're not running successfully against a seven, uh, seven man commit, then we are going to be a pure progression. So we're going to run our three and five step game. Um, where we've got basically three quarter of the field progression from one to two to three to four. We don't go full across the field because we bring our back end guys, you know, somewhat towards the middle of the field to get a read for our quarterback. So he doesn't full field progression. So um, commit eight, you know, the, uh, we, we, we now, if we know we're going to team that's going to get eight in the box or commit eight to the run, we're going to read, we're going to take our seven guys and we're going to block seven of them, read one of them. Usually it's a quick tag by our backside tight end or H. Um, and then we play 11 on 11 and insert our, our running back into the run game for a QB run. Commit eight. If you're going to commit eight into the box that way, uh, somehow, some way, we're going to get the ball as a quick game because there's got to be a window open in the flat area um, or somewhere in that bubble stick area right there. Um, we also will tag our, our run tag. So we'll tag a smoke or run a hitch or uh, a slant normally. But if you're going to commit a either safeties and, and, and a linebacker out of a 40 front, then we're getting one-on-one -on -one out here. And if you're soft, we're just going to get a quick tag to you right now and, and abort uh, the run game. But we always tell our quarterback, if you don't like the run, um, throw it. If you don't like the throw or you're confused, just run the ball because we're safe most of the time. Um, commit nine, it, it, we, we, we have the availability to triple read stuff. It's not something we major in. Uh, we so we don't spend a lot of time on it. it just sounds cute we have one answer for for that um uh but it's our job to get us out of that look if if a team's going to constantly commit if they're committing nine we've got to win over the top or we're in a bad situation anyhow so uh, thought process in our in our play menu i think it's important to just have a uh, for us because we don't always know i mean you only can do so much on the field teams are going to play pretty vanilla to us but if you do something obscure, we want our kids to be sound in this in this small box to be able to play that we feel comfortable in, and then be able to develop downwards. So, like I said, we have we have the availability just to to truly block it with no read. We have the availability to read it, 
We have the availability to, to make it 11 on 11 Q run. We have the availability for the quarterback to, to tag it. And then we also have like, for instance, inside zone, we have an inside zone action with a pocket play action over the top usually. And then we have, you know, or you're naked or, you know, we have a, uh, a, a gap pocket protection. And then we have a true boot off of our gap schemes. Um, something I, I think is good and is simple for our kids is in our pass game, we, we, we have about three quick concepts. So we have a, a, just a hitch seam concept, pretty simple. Everybody runs it. And I think this is a cool idea. It, it, it makes everything easy. You can build and you're not changing many kids is we have a mirrored concept. So they mirrored on both sides. Then we have the hitch concept with an auto on the back. So our auto is double slants. Um, and so if we tag it that way, it's, it's hitch concept and the double slants gives our quarterback a two way go, um, that it's built into the call. Then if we just call hitch, we got four hitches that are available. I don't, not a big fan of four hitches, but sometimes there's a necessary evil of it. Um, four slants, whatever it is. Um, and then we will have, you know, three variations, like a hitch seam, a hitch fade and a hitch stop. Um, that it really only affects one kid and all that other stuff is available to it. So it makes it very simple for 10 kids to understand and it changes one. So again, here and then down this way. Um, I think this is important for you to understand if you're going to take anything away from this is, you know, sometimes going into Friday night, the whole part of this is to manipulate the defense into doing what you want them to do, but it's unknown. If, if, if they've played three straight two by two, three by one teams, good luck. I mean, if they're a three, four team, you don't know if they're going to cap it, play off it, rotate it, who knows. Um, but within a series or so, you've got a pretty good idea. And that's kind of how we, we go into a game and we script our first couple of plays so that we can see what, what they're going to do to a majority of our stuff. Um, but we always tell our kids, this is the structure that they have. We show it to them on film and we tell them we're going to prepare for the worst case scenario. So as the offense, how would I stop us? That's in your structure. That's how we practice. Unless you've seen tight ends, we're going to practice on how we think that you guys are going to defend us. And then we will come out and make game time, real time adjustments um, on the fly on the field. But our kids know that. And if they change what they normally do, and it's something different, we're excited because you're going to screw up. And that's the advantage of, of this double tight stuff it's people have and don't see it very often it's also a detriment to our defense at times because if we play four spread teams in a row and they're right off the kick you know uh you know we're cover three teams so collisioning two is a little different when um you, you're collisioning four verts from a tight end position comparative to uh a, a, a quicker slot kit but um it's all right and, and, it, and it makes us our our defense is, is set up to stop the run um, and if, and if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us throwing. So, uh, we can live with that. Again, these are all the different looks. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, but you know, you can go back through and take a look at the things that we look for to prepare, um, uh, versus a four, two, five, which to me is a four, three cover four or four, four cover three. They can be as cute as they want with it. Um, you know, a three, four cover four, three, four cover three, cover one, whatever. Um, you know, the adjuster stuff on the stack is the stuff that we struggle with the most. So, um, but yeah, so <clears throat> here's kind of a look at, at, at what we look at, at, at a, at a four, three cover four soft edge, you know, that, that does change our tight end schemes and blocking ways. Um, but it, it does help what we're going to identify as a team and, and as a play caller, what we're going to call on Friday night. So in this look, really, we think they're committing, uh, seven. Um, they could end up committing nine, depending on what they do with the Sam and, and the free safeties. Um, but those are the looks that we know. And we know up top, if those kids are committing down at the free safety, strong safety look, that we are going to have to pull the ball out and run a play action because we cannot account for them. But a lot of stuff we do is, is a push crack look anyhow. Um, <clears throat> here's a look at it. And this is, this is phenomenal because, um, you know, this is a, a very good team. We are definitely outclassed in this game. Um, they had a bunch of, of one-way players, and we played a bunch of two-way guys. Um, but this is a 4-3 cover four where they don't remove the Sam. They don't hard edge us. Uh, we insert a Q run, and we bust one really early in a game. 
Um, and it, it, it creates some momentum and keeps us around for a very long time. So if we look at this here, gap, kind of what we talked about, you know, you got a C gap, D gap, B gap, A gap player, A gap player, C gap. He's got to fold in, play B, or he folds out and plays D. He's in no man's land. They've left it up to a safety. A lot of people do that uh, in the D gap, not so much in the B gap. Um, and as you'll see, we run a Q power here, and we end up pulling for that for that free safety number 34 or 14, whatever he is back there. You know, we're not great at center, but we are directly into what we get. I mean, we are absolutely perfect. We're really, our, our three technique combo or double here is almost doubling. Uh, since this guy's disappeared, we're doubling all the way back to the other safety. Um, does he get there? No, he does a good job of just staying flat and square, hoping nothing scrapes over the top, but doesn't take a whole lot. So to me, they are unsound here and that safety has to make the play. We end up pulling the weak side of this stuff is ridiculous. A lot of the times um, in zone and in gap because their, their fourth player at point of attack is 14 yards deep and we'll take a seven yard gain and our guy in space. So um, that's a look out of that for us there. Four two five, so four four or four three swim. We don't have any film of this, um, but but teams do have the tendency to do this. This is an option that we will show our kids um, and during a week. Again, we're keying the same guys. Doesn't really affect our blocking scheme. May affect the Y a little bit, but other than that, not much. Um, four two four four cover three, however you want to call it. Um, don't we, at this point we don't care about the guys in the box. We really don't. And I know it sounds crazy, but the six in the box are are taken care of. Are, are, we care how are they going to play. So is that strong safety and Sam going to play in? They're going to play on the line. That's something that we have to adjust. To me, this is a commit eight because um, if you, if these guys aren't folding in and aren't playing the run, we've got seven on six. And if we had a read into it, it's seven on five. And, and we've got the ball to the perimeter where we want it or up the gut hard right now, um, however we got. So um, here is a look at this. And this is – an interesting look. Hopefully I got it. Yep. I did do this. I added this late. Cause this is not, we don't see a whole lot of four, four anymore. We see a lot of, a lot more three, four teams, odd stack, uh, primarily three, four. But, um, if you look here, we run a Q run. So we're making 11 on 11, but look at the box. I mean, we've manipulated this out of the deuce look for us. And so they've taken that. We've guaranteed that kids out of the box. We've got six in a corner and an outside nickel down here. He's not even involved in the game. Just stay on the sideline, bud. Um, and we're really running seven on six. And then we're block, block, and there's a free safety hanging out here. And you can look at it better from the back end. It's a little cloudy. It was a rainy game. Um, but they are completely deficient in C-gap. And this is awesome. And we know that. Here we go. Now they're not. They move. Now they're deficient in D-gap because we, we can block that kid. Um, and, and basically by the bump of this, they've now become deficient on the backside by our terms. I know defensive guys would, would blow a lid when I say that, but that's how we believe it. And it's the structure that does it. They're not used to this. They're not used to having to defend eight gaps. They can usually maybe void out a, a backside D-gap sometimes. And the minute you do that and you show it's consistent for us, we're going to, the ball will present itself there for us. So, uh, again, we got the ball to the third level. That's what we wanted. That was our expectation. So, hopefully, that film's working for you guys. Um, I'm just going to keep this here for you. Um, again, are, are they going to play? How are they going to play these nickels? Are they going to play them? Uh, or outside linebackers? Are they going to play them like this? Or are they going to play them off like that? All right. Um, if they play them like this, we got seven. They're going to bring nine if they bring the, uh, the the free and the strong in. And we know that we've got to get rid of the ball quickly. Um, if those guys aren't really affecting the, the, the rush of the quarterback, we can manipulate those two kids, um, the free safety and strong safety, with some play action over the top and definitely get a one-on-one -on -one look, sometimes a pass-off look where we just got a seam route running right down the middle from our X or Z. Um, 
you know, then again, if they play off, we're looking to rotate. We'll show you two clips of that here in a second. Um, is there a way, are they rotating to the field? Are they not? It's very simple. They, they can only do one to two things. Um, and we'll show this and we'll, we'll bounce pretty quickly. Um, so this is our ace look. This is the three, four cover four look. <clears throat> Tighten down, good safeties. These guys were pretty honest in what they did. Again, you want to look at it from the back end. Um, they're, they're going to be unsound somewhere, especially if they're not two gap in that nose and they're not. And so they are C gap deficient here. And we've now made this a power read play and we're pulling for the free safety again. And, you know, it's not a home run play, but our guard doesn't block anybody. And it's still a great play because they are not gap sound in what they are doing. It's not normal. There's nobody two gapping. They're slanting this way. Awesome. That kid, the, 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 this kid may, because they may rotate, he may have been having to play C gap, but this is not norm. So they are D gap and we're on, you know, we're reading him bang out the gate. We got a good seal. Balls at the third level. He doesn't, nobody's going to complain about a 29 yard uh, rock rush or whatever it is. Uh, let's see here. The other three, four against this is against Deuce. Uh, we'll, we'll cover this quickly, but this is awesome. This formation is phenomenal for us. If we're having a hard time, we usually get into this and the team will have one check to it. Um, and it's usually rotate cover three and you'll get a ver version of a 52 cover four, cover three or you're going to get a true 4-4 four, four or an overload and you're either going to leave the backside alone for us to run the ball or you're going to commit uh, to the front side and or you're not going to commit enough to the front side and we're going to be able to play action or be able to get a, a, a good quick game or a good run look into this. So um, this, is a, this is a great formation for us. Um, and we, Ace, the two by two is our best stuff. Um, but this is some of our, our, our fun stuff. And we got both of our wide receivers on the best side so we can max protect and play a really cute two game, uh, two route combo game with those guys. Um, I'll just go quickly through this other stuff and then show you some things that teams did to us um, that they were unsuccessful with. Um, the last one here, three, five. Um, you know, again, it's like a three, four. We're just looking for what, what's that adjuster or the backside guide going to do uh, with the strong safety. Are they going to play off? Are they going to cap? Um, if you're going to cap those down, you commit eight, ninth player. Um, is that normally what you do? So uh, I'm not going to show any film on that because that's pretty common. That, that's uncommon for us to get those kids walk down. Actually, we did play a team that did it. But the three, three stack the, the hardest part is this one I'm going to show you. Um, we have to get the ball to the perimeter because we typically can't, we, we can block the free safety. It's just not as clean and fun. So when we get a team that plays this way, we try to get our formations to adjust to make sure that, because usually once you, once you get unbalanced, they have to unbalance. And so we'll take a kid here or, or get into empty real quick. And that free safety adjuster kid has to make a decision on what he's going to Real quickly, some things that we do uh, multiple look wise. Um, I'm not going to go through all this, but the, you know, it, our personnel dictates how much we do other things. The year that we show film on right now um, is we we had two tight ends, two kids that you know, one kid could have played in the slot, but we like keeping them in there. Um, if you've got a, a kid that's a true tight end and a flexible kid, you can do multiple things um, with him. And this is some of the stuff that we can build off of. And our run game doesn't change. Um, our blocking schemes don't really change a lot, or if any at all, um, we just get a cleaner, sometimes a, a cleaner look to the two by side. Um, but cleaner is not always better for us because if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then we feel pretty comfortable in, in being successful. Um, this is something we're gonna we're gonna do pretty heavily this year um, with our wing stuff and be able to run our power and zone stuff out of that. Um, but how are you going to commit? That's our biggest question. You're going to play us a soft edge, hard edge. You're going to play uh, commit eight. You're going to commit seven. How are you going to do that? What's it going to look like? Um, here's the look there out of the deuce stuff. I'll show you some clips on that. Um, deuce first Triton and showed it. And then deuce first BC. 
So here's a deuce four four. I think we just showed this again. Yep. So not a big deal there. Um, we're out flanking guys and we've got numbers and guys that aren't doing the right spots and right jobs and their normal jobs. And so our structure, which is very basic to us has shown them problems and they create issues, gap issues, responsibility issues on their own. And, and for us, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, you got all these different variations. We don't use a whole lot of these. It depends on the year. But I will show, and I'm going to show some empty stuff here because this is our favorite stuff. Very simple. It's basically some, some junk routes with our T um, that create explosive plays for our tight ends. Um, we'll, we'll line up in quads, and we'll jet this kid across for run reasons, um, flash fakes, and we'll run Q, Q reads off of that. But we'll also run this kid across, and he has, like, a spot route, and we'll run a smash concept everywhere else. And a lot of times the eye discipline changes, and this kid is – wide open ends up getting to basically this look here so um in the way we call it and if you guys want any of this i'm, I'm uh, i'll share all the film we got but um the f is is primarily our he's going to be the kid that can run a, a really good route um maybe not the best of blockers um but he gets into a cutoff and he's quicker this is the y is typically a true tight end um, we're, we're waiting for the chance that we get those kids to play both but um, let's watch them real quick on empty and then I'll show you some confusion and then I'll get out of your hair. Um, so let's go to empty. Oops. And so this is our run stuff out of empty. Again, nothing changes for us schematically. We're just moving the box and we're just showing, Hey, quads, you've got to be responsible. We probably should have kept that kid over there where he was. Um, because of, of what he was going to, you know, he, he really wasn't affecting us. We were just trying to get these kids to see what they were going to do. And, and they chased us and it ends up helping us later on. Um, and, and we pin a kid and this is a soft edge. This is huge for us. We're going to trap the kid down here. We just do a horrible job and take a high path, but we're playing Q run. And obviously if you've got a quarterback that can run um, and, and has a semi-limited throwing ability, this is phenomenal because you're protecting yourself all over the place. Um <clears throat> You know, you're looking at a box here. The, the D-gap player is either that free safety or guy playing man-to-man -man on the backside of it. Um, it should be a pretty good look for us. You know, we just don't do a great job, and we're a little hesitant at the left guard position. But other than that, we get that. I mean, we're out the gate that way. Um, <clears throat> again, team, a lot of times when you do this, teams will, will play uh, your cover zero to us. So the last thing that I'll leave you guys with, and I'll put up my information at the end, um, is the purpose of us doing this was, one, we were limited uh, at, at the quarterback position throwing wise, and guys were committing eight to the box. We loved running the ball. Um, so we wanted to bring a way to do it. So we wanted to go down in our menu, keep everything up front. We always say our offensive line schemes are gold. The kids on the back end will learn it because they're getting the ball. So we can be a little more dynamic with those kids, but we want those front seven kids to be uh, very sound in what they do um, and manipulate these guys into what we're trying to, what we practice or get them out of what they normally do to create confusion. Um, and, and not all of this is great, obviously. Um, it's what it is, but we've created a different look. I mean, every time that we showed up like this, Eight out of 10 times, they brought double edge pressure and we knew that. And so that as a coach that helped us be able to, to call the plays. Um, here's an empty. We didn't get pressure out of empty. Um, we didn't block it very well in this sense. And, and our slide was incorrect. We got a free run, but we create a kid playing man to man at tight end. Probably should get the ball out a little quicker, but it's what it is. It's a good pop pass you know, throw right now to a kid that's normally middle of the field. A lot of high school teams don't attack the middle of the field with a tight end. You better find a way to do it. Um, just our base inside zone. Very good. Obviously a run through again, we have the opportunity for our quarterback to read it. Uh, we just make a quick tag and adjust off of that. So we didn't get it quite, quite the good look we wanted. 
if we don't overcoach that, hey, man, just go. As you can see, our tight end's really aggressive in the look. Uh, does his job, you know, not, not to the best of ability, but he does his job. Um, and, you know, we could spend a whole clinic tape on, on how we teach our tight ends to block inside and, and wide zone and how we do it in the gap schemes. Um, we could spend a whole nother hour sitting here talking about what they do in routes and pass pro. Um, I just want to give you guys uh, some simple ideas that we do. I mean, we're an inside zone, wide zone, uh, long trap and, and, and gap team. So uh, empty look again, try to see if we can get one clean here. Yeah, so this is a, a soft edge. A lot of times we run outside zone out of jet. We're going to pin and pull real quick. Uh, not a true pin and pull, but we're going to pin and get to the perimeter. And we're creating a kid now with the motion who has to play the run. We're, tr we're creating a corner who normally doesn't play man-to-man -man at a tight end and sit out on an island in a compressed run game, D-gap defender. He now has to be involved. And we get lucky and we go to the corner and we get a two-for-one. And, you know, he's out the gate. We got a simple play that we can do every single day in the summer practice. So, um, you know, here's another look at a, uh, uh, off of our play action, probably, probably a deep motion look here. Yep. And we're just creating eye discipline, not doing anything. Five, just faking it. I mean, maybe we toss it to him one time and put it on film. We've put a kid who's now man to man, but we're a primary run team into a, into a bind up here at corner. He's got to be, oh, oh crud, here he comes. And now we're over the top and we got luck. Um, and, and got a great look. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a base look at everything that we do. Um, not what we do, but I mean, that, everything we do, but offensively, that's a real snippet into uh, why we believe in using multiple tight ends. We try to grow every year and use them in more of a multiple fashion. Um, but simplistically, man, the, the ace and deuce formations, we base, I mean, that was 85% of our offensive formations that year. We probably were 10% um, uh, empty. And most of those plays out of empty were, were, were bigger plays because it creates a, a decision for that defensive coordinator, what he has to do. And so when we structure a game plan, we really look for A, B, C, you know, what are you going to do within your structure? Uh, what could you possibly do to break tendency and, and break your structure, which then creates chaos on your side, which is beneficial for us and our kids. So um, this has been a, a, a godsend to us. Um, offensively, and we look forward to growing it um, every year now um, and making it more multiple and bringing more depth and more uh, more precise uh, on, on what we're doing and exactly what we're looking for. So, again, Coach Bansher, thank you for, for inviting me. Um, if you guys need anything, my cell phone's down at the bottom, and that is my school email. So I'm happy to send whatever you guys want and need. Feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you.